everything. All right, ladies and gentlemen, congratulations if you've made it this far into the course. We're in an HTML tables, tables of learn HTML and CSS part one. So what are tables? Tables are a way of kind of organizing your data in a table structure. So you'll see right here, this is a great example of a table. We have our table heading, and then we have various inputs in our table. Now there's a lot of uh, nesting in tables, so if you're not comfortable with nesting things at this point, uh, you're gonna have to get comfortable pretty well. You'll see that we have a table, a table head, which is this section right here, this ends, then we have a table row, which is basically the row across here, and then we have these THs, which is basically the table header in our table head in the table row, and then we have our table body, which is where the bulk of the data goes, and then we, of course, have our table tag. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So an index at HTML create a table. Um, I guess we'll do it below the search. So all we have to do to start off is basically declare, kind of like how we declare that we're going to uh, start our HTML, kind of the same thing. We're just declaring our table is going to go within here. Next, we want to add two rows to the table. You'll notice that we don't really have anything on here quite yet. We're basically just getting things set up. So we're going to have a tr slash tr and then a tr closing tr tag. So we're adding two rows. Again, nothing's in it yet because we haven't actually added any data. So up next, what we want to do is go ahead and add some data to our table. So to do that, we have these TD tags, table data. Um, in the second row, we're going to add three cells of data. So here we're going to add TD slash TD. So our first row of data is going to be Adam's green work. Our second row of data is going to be fourteen. And then our final row of data is going to be our package items. It's going to run that. And now we should see at least one row of data. There we go. And they have it nicely styled and everything. By default, you'll this will be ugly as shit. So, <laughs> so definitely organize your data to look nice. So uh, they make a good point here that table data doesn't really make much sense unless you know what it is you're looking at. at. So that's where the table, the table header comes in hand. So in the first row, we're going to add some table header stuff here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to add a T head. And then similar to the table data, it's just going to be a TH. And we'll go ahead and copy and paste that over two more times. And then we want to put company name. We want to put number of items to ship. And then next action. Very cool. So now we have our table header here. That's basically saying which each one of these columns represents. So it talks about how um, we need to add some stuff to the... You can't really see the... Uh, kind of how I said earlier how you're going to have trouble... Um, seeing the table they've added some nice css uh they suggest maybe adding a border using the border attribute to do that and they're giving us some additional data here so we're going to go ahead and just copy and paste this under our first row of data when we run this we now have this nice table very nice So the next thing that we're going to do is sometimes we want 
we want our table data to take up more than one slot. So like right now, each one of these is only taking up a single column. But perhaps we actually want just one section to take up more than one. So we're gonna see, you see this call span, this basically so stands for spanning two columns. So we'll go to Adam's Green Works here. And we're gonna assign call span. By default, this is one. We're gonna change this to two. Let's go ahead and run that. And now you'll see right now, it's gonna throw off the rest of our table, but our, the, our column here is taking, it is actually taking up two columns now. Now you can do this for uh, rows as well. So we'll do it to the one just below it. And we'll do, uh, I believe it's just row span, right? Yeah, row span. So you need to you need this to span more than one row. You do row span equal to two. So this one right here should go down. So you see right now this is taking up two rows. Granted, it doesn't make a lot of sense with what we're doing. All right, I'm going to try a different row because apparently they didn't like that row that I took. Oh. I forgot that this you have to run this one time before getting it to go. Otherwise, uh, the IDE messes it up. So there we go. But yeah, so we have our row span and our call span. So we also have T-body. T-body is kind of like how we have the body to contain everything. That's kind of what T-body is for the data. So let's go ahead and do that to control everything. So we're just going to go ahead and put T body like so. Actually, let's go ahead and run this page real quick. T body slash T body. Nothing changed, it's more of a functional thing as to why that's in there. I believe we already did this, it's basically just saying to enclose the first row in a T head, uh, which we already did. So there's also a table footer si similar to how we have a table header. Now. I was talking in a previous thing about making something dynamic. Now what that means is, say we don't know what these numbers are or they're changing, we could set up a table footer to count them up in a dynamic sort of way. In this case we're not doing that, but we're going to go ahead and add a footer element that right here, add this to it. So within T body, we're going to go ahead and create a T foot, slash T foot, let's go ahead and throw that in there and run it. I think we may have to add a table row. Oh, I guess not. So here's our table footer right here. And you'll see that they have some styling here that they're telling us about and whatnot. So we're gonna jump into the style.css because we don't want the, uh, the footers and the headers to look too identical. So we wanna change the font of all table headings and table data to 18 pixels. So to do that, we're going to do T head, remember you can target elements, and TDs, and we're going to change the font dash size to 18px. That should be what we're trying to do. Try that one more time. And there, everything is now a little bit bigger, a little bit cleaner. So, we have just finished part one of Learn HTML and CSS. What did we learn about our, uh, let's do a quick review of what we learned about tables. We learned that um, what tables do, the purpose of them, really just to kind of organize data that doesn't necessarily need to be responsive, that needs to stay in order. We learned that you need to have a table tag, and within that you have the table body, you have a table header for the headers, and then you add a table row, rows across, um, table data for the data aspect, and table head tags. We also learned about table footer, we learned that we can span multiple columns using call span, and we learned that we can span multiple 
multiple rows as well using row span. So um, it was a it was definitely a good HTML and CSS course. Even someone like myself who's been doing it for a while, you learn new things all the time. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I learned a little bit and a nice refresher on some things as well. But as always, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. If you're looking for a section to go from from here, I believe uh, there's another HTML and CSS course on Codecademy, uh, an outdated one, but uh, it'd be a nice refresher. You can also jump over to the uh, free code camp and do the HTML and CSS portion there and eventually work your way up to JavaScript. Um, I have videos on all that, so if you get stuck, check that out, and uh, it'll help unstuck you, unstick you. Uh, but as always, thank you to those of you supporting me on Patreon. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching the video. Special thanks to our sponsor, Dev Mountain. Definitely check them out at devmountain.com. If you're looking for a boot camp that's in front-end development, iOS, or UX, go ahead and give them a shot. Tuition includes housing, so you can get up and go and fully immerse yourself in the program. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.